Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of Leadnap Gaming and we're talking about the trouble with mining. First up, thank you to everyone for the well wishes and support while recovering from surgery. It's been a tough road with more months ahead, but we are back in action this week, and I'm excited if you couldn't tell. Second, a discussion of mining cannot be had without talking about the Odyssey, which you can win one in our 20k giveaway by simply subscribing and commenting, and speaking of which, here are the names for January. A few weeks ago, we left off talking about mining how to make millions with absolute ease. But there's a critical problem with mining in my own opinion. I'll leave it to CIG to sell it to us. So, more action? Guns blazing? No. Right here. Now admittedly, you can exactly do this today as is, because as we see in the video, the laser's off. Except here. But to me, the trouble with mining is all the effort in the minigame. This pervades all of Star Citizen though, which is the real problem and the real game-killing potential. What I mean by that is, to me, there's an issue in the amount of effort I need to put into the actual act of mining out the rock, when the truth of the matter is it should be far more simple. Now before you quit the video, let me explain. The real art of any real mining operation is in the prospecting. Digging out the materials you're after, even today, isn't that difficult, even if it's hard work to do physically. Star Citizen makes the hardest part of mining easy. I can't even fly around the surface without my ship telling me, hey lad, look, there, over here, mineables, over here, while well, I'm on the way to drop off a package in a ship that can't even mine. This has a carryover effect, a video game designer input that will ruin in the long run a core promised asset of the game, a verse with limited materials. How so? Well, in a video game, you have to limit what's available to the players. Magda can't have everything to mine along with Daymar. Then you could just go to any planet and mine. No, Magda must have valuable resource X, while Daymar has valuable resource Y. Sure, they share some of those cheap materials, but generally speaking, you have to have these places in the verse where you find various materials so that players have to travel there. And then while there, players have to risk that someone will come after them. Alas, this creates a problem. Today, there are no limits for the remainder of the Alpha. As an example, Aberdeen will never run out of quartz, and thus become barren. Ten years after launch, the Stanton system could be completely barren, though. How long will the verse last, then? And this is very important because it brings the most critical gameplay assets of the early years forward. The idea that you could stake a claim on land, but that you might then build a base to defend an area. But what org is going to spend a few real months and a couple billion UEC to develop a major space outpost and colony, and then after a few months the region's been scraped clean of mineable aeronite, and the region rendered no longer profitable to maintain? What does any of this have to do with a guy drinking coffee? Well, first off, coffee is the key to the universe, and don't you forget it. Second, it goes back to the prospecting. It goes back to how mining should be run in the game. The real time suck, the real challenge of mining, should be in finding what you're looking for. I said that, but in another space video game, I spent hours shooting probes out into space, reading planet scans, looking for the right places to mine. Then, because it was the future, I deployed a bunch of mining drones, which orbited what I found and harvested it. I don't want drones, but it's 2952 for crying out loud. You mean to tell me that my entirely automated ship can scan the energy level of the rock but needs me 
the slow wetware running machine to tell it what energy to apply. My mom's car can tell how far away it is from the car in front of it and speed up or slow down. This is the simple sort of industrial process that interns write code for machines to do. Which is doubly important because, as I said, this affects the entire game. The hill CIG seems to be choosing to die on is that all mini games must be complicated, time consuming, and 100% interactive. But what Star Citizen needs is varying levels of gameplay. There's days I want to suit up, strap in, and hard fly some space combat. Let's go get some! But there's days I've had a long day at work. I just want to sit back in my chair, sip a cold one, and pass some time to relax. I want to turn my mining laser on on a deposit, get out of the chair, go grab that cup of coffee from the back of my prospector. It's fine to me if it takes 35 minutes to harvest a node. I'm killing time chatting in global with my buddies, watching a lead nap gaming episode on how to make millions mining with my Moby. Most of all, I just want to relax. Because right now, if it's been a long day at real work, I just don't play Star Citizen. There have to be varying levels of interactivity to achieve varying levels of gamer. Which drives us right back around the circle to prospecting. That's the interactive element of the loop. I want to be able to tune my scanners and be able to decide what to scan for, levels of the trace. I want to look at sensor data and have to decide what part of the planet I need to fly down to, instead of just QT to a destination and fly any direction for five minutes to be in the sweet stuff. What doing that delivers is a chance to get away from the standard video game artificial placement of materials. Everything can be everywhere. My buddy Splat can claim a part of Damar with the UEE and strip it clean of Quantanium and Laramite. Deciding that nothing else there is worth his time to mine, he could sell the claim to me, looking to go mine the quartz there. It creates a value and demand to places even after they've been cleared of what the bulk of the player base determines as the meta. Because aluminum might not bring in the big bucks back at the station, but the vast known aluminum fields on selling no one wants to fight over could be the perfect low-key place for me to park my prospector and mine in peace. For thousands of years, man has yet to get all the materials from Earth. But imagine if this planet only had three to four mineral resources, and we had to go to Mars for three or four other ones. These simple steps create the genesis for already planned game loops, which currently seem so disjointed. Explorers now have additional cause to scour planets, lay claims, and then run the data back from the frontier to turn around and sell or exploit with mining vessels, outposts, which need protection, because some spots will always be better than others. And with protection comes the eventual need for salvage. Everywhere matters. Every gamer's playstyle is accounted for, from the folks looking for an easy pastime to those looking for an interactive challenge. Then we have more reason to go into the back of the prospector. We have reason to gather with the crew and our mole around the table while work progresses. Then the Odyssey works, because right now, if you explore too far and reach a spot with no Quantanium, what's the point of the QT refinery? In the 1980s, we had computers that could fly jets at the speed of sound close to the treetops around hills without pilot input. Today, our cars can drive themselves, and robots can clean our houses. I shouldn't need to tell my mining laser to maintain that green energy zone. That technology is so easy to develop, CIG had to bring in easy anti-cheat. Because lo and behold, Star Citizen players were probably already coding it. So let me know down in the comments what you want mining to be like. As always, make sure to share this with your fellow citizens, hopefully CIG too. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will catch you all next time. <laughs>